So this sounds like um, they could have uh, lost this race against time, and this could be a uh, worst-case scenario. And what do you mean by that? Well, the, uh, the fuel rods uh, conduct or, or continue a, a um, uh, produce radioactive material in the, under great heat and pressure. And unless that is cooled down, the heat and pressure will build up and the fuel rods can melt through the uh, reactor core container. And in this case, the building is the only uh, um, containment to keep it from being released into the environment. And in mm. fact, now it appears that the uh, uh, building has been damaged with this explosion. So the radioactive material could just uh, be released into the atmosphere now. Mm. What does that mean for the likes of you and me, or perhaps more importantly, those who live in this area and who have been evacuated at this point? Well, the most important thing, of course, is to get away from the uh, reactor from that uh, area. And uh, that's the big uh, danger. And of course, at some point, people will have to get in there to try to uh, contain this uh, material. And this is going to be uh, uh, very difficult um, to contain. How long could this be a disaster zone then? Excuse, excuse me? How long could this be a disaster zone? How could it be a disaster zone? No, how long could it be a disaster zone? Oh, this could be for uh, days, uh, days on end. Frightening stuff, isn't it? Yes, very, very much so. Okay, Daniel, we're going to uh, keep you with me if I can. I've got Stan Grant uh, also on the line that I want to uh, bring in. I don't know if you heard what Daniel was saying there, um, Stan, and we've been discussing what we thought the uh, worst-case scenario might be going forward. Uh, things aren't looking great at this point, are they? No, they aren't. No, I have heard what Daniel has had to say, and essentially, again, if you look at the chronology of this, that the shutdown of the reactors after the quake, that's triggering a heating problem and not being able to cool the reactors, then the steam being released, uh, the officials here, the nuclear officials, admitting that, yes, there was some radioactive material released with that steam, not enough to cause any harm. Then this cesium being detected also being released, another indicator, according to uh, an official spokesman, here another indicator that the the fuel rod could have been damaged could have been melting down and as you're hearing there from from daniel saying that look this is a race against time that they could be losing and of course the worst case scenario that this heat and pressure continues that uh, it melts the fuel rods and the radioactive material then seeps out into the atmosphere and given we've had this explosion that has blown the roof of one of these these reactors that would then indicate to you just how serious this situation is uh, becky just an update on the situation of the people themselves the the security agency here attached to the nuclear agency have been holding a news conference and saying that the four men have been injured as a result of the blast they're in there trying to cool the reactor but the injuries are not serious but of course the ongoing problem now is this threat of greater radioactive material seeping out into the atmosphere and as you as you already know people have been moved back in a 10 kilometer radius to avoid any potential problems Becky. Stan it's about four um sorry about 6 48 local time with you uh, 9 48 London time so we are now more than 24 hours into um this story just just sort of take us back um over the past 24 hours if you will for the sake of our viewers what have you seen, who have you spoken to, and what have you heard? Well, what we've seen is, is this chronology, this initial shutdown of the reactors after the earthquake, which the officials say is, is a procedural thing. This, is, this, is, this was the working as it should. But then there was uh, also a, a re there was also this, this interruption of the power source from outside the reactor as well, which has led 
to this problem in, in being able to, to, to cool the reactor. And it's really escalated from that. So we have this initial problem, then the heating, um, reports that three times uh, hotter than it, than it should be, this report of radioactive material eight times higher than normal outside the fence of the reactor. And, and it has just continued throughout the day, the steam being released, the explosion, mm. the detection of this cesium, uh, again an indication of a fuel rod heating inside the, the reactor as well. So it has been building, and again we come back to what Daniel says, if this is a race against time, if we've seen 24 hours pass and still unable to actually get in there and cool the reactor, well as Daniel says, you are getting into a situation of worst case scenario. In fact, you can actually say it's worse than they would have ever, ever have hoped right now, Becky. Mm. All right, Stan Grant uh, with news which isn't great uh, out of uh, Tokyo for us this evening. Uh, Stan, we thank you for that. Stan Grant, one of your um, reporters on the ground, of course, uh, are one of our senior correspondents in the region. Um, we are going to take a very short break. Do not go away. More on the Japanese earthquake and its aftermath after this important story. Don't go away.